Rocket Service. My goal is to fly a rocket into the next two solar eclipses to cross the United States. And this rocket is going to help us get there. This rocket's name is Cascade. Yes, I know it doesn't say its name on it, uh, we'll get to that. Flying this rocket is going to teach us many lessons we need to learn before flying the solar eclipse rocket. The rocket I want to fly for the solar eclipse is supposed to fly at about 100,000 feet, and I don't get many opportunities to fly that, but this we can fly a lot. Cascade has flown two times now. Once as the second stage of a two-stage project I did with my friend Joe Barnard, and once on its own, flying, falling in three separate pieces and testing a 360 camera. Instead of going through the timeline linearly, designed to build to flight and rinse and repeat, we're going to look at the lessons that we've learned so far from this rocket. I'm going to take it apart and talk through the timeline asynchronously. So keep an eye on the corner of the video so that way you know where we are in the timeline. This is how Cascade was laid out for the second flight. Our goals for this flight were to get 360 camera footage and to make sure all seven shoots deploy. We're gonna do the shoots first, so that way I can take it apart, and then we'll talk about the 360 camera once I take this apart. All three sections fell separately, and we need to make sure none of the shoots get caught inside. So the rocket separates here, oh, with some effort. Oh boy, what have I done? And you can see that this Nomex protects the parachutes from the pyrotechnic charge. So I'm gonna pull on this, and we get this nice little burrito. So this is one of the key things that we learned from this flight. I didn't want any shoots to be stuck in here, but you saw just now that the burrito pulled all of the shoots out for us. So the pyrotechnic charges come from this side and they push this out with the burrito. And then in flight, this burrito comes undone, revealing four of our seven parachutes. The booster just needs this one parachute. So I'm actually gonna pull it away. These three chutes are free to come out. The middle section plus nose section is free. So at this point, everything can come down safely. If the uh, upper avionics section does not fire the charges, that's totally fine. Everything will come back safely. And so this is a super critical thing. So for that reason, there's three different ways to deploy these chutes. Number one, there's an ejection charge on the motor. Number two, uh, there's the Easy Mini flight computer. Easy, Easy Mini is right here. And we have wires run down the raceway to the pyro charges. And then there's also an AVA that lives here that also goes to the pyro charge down here. So now we have the motor ejection and two flight computers that can independently separate and make sure everything comes down safe. That's one of my favorite features of this rocket. So now, there's another AVA in the nose cone that is able to fire its own charges. So when it fires those charges, it's, the rocket separates again here. We're gonna pull on this side. A bunch of things are gonna happen. Number one, the 360 camera comes out. And then number two, this deployment bag comes out. This deployment bag, if we keep pulling, three more parachutes, the last three of our seven parachutes. And the deployment bag does not stay with the nose section. The deployment bag is doing what the Nomex burrito did on this section. It's just there to pull out the chutes. So now the middle section is on its own. So now we have all three of our sections. Just like on the fin can where the charge is on the inside pushing everything out, on the nose side, the pyro charges are down here. In fact, they're located right here. So they push everything out. So that's how we do the shoot deploy. Hello, Editing Andrew here, coming to you from Voice Over Land. Uh, some of these lessons are gonna be from success, some are gonna be from failures. This one is from a success. I'm gonna be using this next time I fly this rocket. So for the next one, follow me back in time. You know, this doesn't suck. I'm gonna design a case that goes over the whole thing. It's open on the top. It's like a big U shape like this. But this is the best I got for right now. And it's time to uh, ask some friends nicely to print this up. Oh my God. Let's go.
there's a clear black line where the case is not getting stitched out. Version four prototype. And the truth. Look, it's my face. Okay, I can work with this. This is good. Wave a goodbye. camera is that half of it got covered in soot. So here's where I think that problem came from. So you can see this link is where it connects to this eyeball. The problem is when these are connected it's really hard to then fold this over and seal it off from the black powder gas. On the other side the Nomex is on this side and the charges are on this side. But on this side this Nomex and the charges are right next to one another. So it's really important how to get this folding right, and I did not get it right. So next time I might want to do another deployment bag situation like we did for these shoots, and have a deployment bag just hold all of this stuff, and then have it pull out with the rest. For the first flight, the main goals were to finish the initial vehicle build and learn more about staging. Most of the build used pretty standard high power rocket techniques, so I'm going to focus on a couple specifics. First, I cut the fin slots by tracing a straight line with a hobby knife by hand. The tubes are just cardboard, so the knife was plenty, but the straightness and width of the slots was crucial for positioning them in the next step. Good as we're going to get? Since I did it by hand, the fins ended up out of line. It's a little hard to tell they're out of line from these pictures, but you can see the results in the flights. On the first, the two rockets fly mostly straight while they're together. But after separation, Cascade decides to make me dizzy. On the second flight, the spin led to a pretty significant corkscrew on the way up. Next time, I'll either make a stiffer alignment jig for the fins or use a straight edge to run the knife against, or both. To separate Joe's rocket from mine, he made a piston system based on the mirror. The hope was to use the piston to separate with hot staging or lighting the motor while the rocket is still attached as a backup. It all relied on the base of my rocket fitting in this gap in Joe's staging adapter. Remember this picture? During the fin build, I glued the pieces of tube between the fins together on another piece of tube, then clamped it down to secure it. However, one clamp was tighter than the other and it turned the back of the rocket from a circle into an oval, and it didn't fit in the circular gap. The fix was to make what we lovingly called the crown, out of four pieces of fiberglass, some spare tube, and lots of rock epoxy. With the upper stage secure, it was time to send it across the yard. How you, do you feel lucky? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, so after that test, we increased the amount of black powder, almost doubling it for the flight. However, it still wasn't quite enough, and instead we hot staged. Next time, we'll leave more time for stage testing, double checking the interfaces ahead of time, maybe make some duplicate parts, and we'll definitely keep hot staging as a backup, because that saved our butts. <laughs> We got shoots on the booster! For both flights, I needed to run a wire down the side of the rocket. On the first flight, it was to light the second stage, and on the second, it was for deploying shoots. The raceway itself was pretty simple. Nice straight runs of wire down the side of the rocket. The connection at the split plane, though, was annoying to get right. The first time we did it, we kept the leads shorted as bare wire and then twisted it together on the pad. Thanks, Isla. The second time, I installed some crimp connectors to simplify integration. Then when we get to the pad, it's just plug, 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 plug. We're good to go. Learning that this crimp tool is a little bit uh, too big, or these <laughs> wires are too small, one or the other. Feature you watching this right now, you're not using crimp connectors anymore, okay? They keep coming off.
Okay, uh, or use crimp connectors that are the right size. Next time, we'll get the right size crimp connectors. On a similar note, the avionics integration was really tricky. I figured I could go pretty quickly by using a pre-designed solution, and I built the Lock eBay for three inch rockets. But fitting the GPS and receiver and an Easy Mini and two batteries and AVA proved too difficult without CAD. I ended up cutting a hole out on the top of the avionics bay for all the wires. The worst part was that these issues took time on L-1 the day before launch, making things super stressful. So next time, I'll CAD the avionics bay, or at least plan it out in 3D, even if I'm using a pre-built solution. Happy launch week, and also, happy moving week. Last but not least, the way I treated time during this project basically made everything worse. I don't know if there's enough time to print a version 5. I had less footage the closer we got to L-1 because we were finishing building the rocket. On the second flight, only half of one camera worked out of four. We took more risk knowing that we were racing rising winds on the day of launch. Is that gonna be okay? Or is it gonna get covered in black powder gas? I made compromises attaching stuff to the rocket, not on flight safety, but definitely not what I wanted. That less sleep and not enough time to write a checklist made me uncomfortable because I couldn't remember stuff. I relied a lot more on my friends, who are awesome, but were just as tired as I was. There's a bajillion ways to try and manage time better, but my top choice for next time is just to integrate a few days before launch and then scrub if things aren't put together. Both of these flights were on the first full assembly of these rockets, and so it's no wonder that they didn't go according to plan. Couple quick lessons to round it out. Hawk Loot makes a pretty good temporary adhesive, just not for attaching things to cardboard. And always double check if your SD card and camera are compatible, otherwise you'll be disappointed. Despite all this criticism, these flights are exactly what I needed them to be. An opportunity to learn as much as I can by flying. They were successes. Everything went up and everything came down in the number of pieces they should have. To tie up any loose ends, I have at least two more flights planned on this rocket. As long as we get good 360 footage without any soot, we should be pretty good. There are also a couple more chute configurations I want to try, where the camera is between the two sections of rocket under the chute. Maybe this way, things don't have to fall totally separately and it'll be easy to recover the rocket and cameras. It doesn't matter a ton for this rocket, but it might matter a lot later when the two separate pieces might be miles apart. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Adams, and I will see you next time. <laughs> hey, yo! Adams, I have great news. Your rocket is still in flight. It just never touched the ground. <laughs>